Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today, as always, I've got an interesting Astro topic for you guys. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com, and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count, and here's a few more of the goodies. All right guys, so as the topic of the video um, implies and suggests that uh, today we are talking about Teleview telescopes and uh, probably more importantly really their accessories as well. So if you've been in the hobby for any you know, length of time, you've, you've probably heard of Teleview. Um, I just want to start off, you know, just kind of like by uh, kind of talking a little bit about the history of the company and kind of, you know, just give you guys my uh, kind of like, you know, experience, I guess, with using their products. I've been using them for, you know, pretty much since I've been in the hobby. So let's get to it. So Teleview was started by Albert Naglier uh, in 1977. Uh, uh, he was a lifetime amateur astronomer. You know, he was kind of always in the hobby. By the way, most of this info I got from Company 7's website. Excellent write-up on the company. So if you kind of want to, you know, kind of more detailed over you, check it out. Um, a couple of years, so he did make uh, uh, an early telescope that was 140 millimeters, I believe, that was really fast at f4. Honestly, I have never really even heard of the thing until I read this article, so I, I'm not sure how common it is. Uh, but anyway, um, more importantly, though, a couple of years after starting the company, he started producing a line of um, plossal eyepieces. Uh, plossal eyepieces, they typically use a four to five element design. They're around 50 degrees of field of view. So nothing extraordinary even for back in uh, 1979, I think is when these were introduced. These are that, that I have here are actually the original, um, they're called a volcano style design. So they do not have like an eye cup at all. Um, I actually really like this kind of why I own them is because you could get, you know, really close to the eye cup or to the um, islands, I should say, uh, without, you know, kind of getting the eye cup in your way. So these are the original uh, eye pieces that he made. These were kind of like the original boxes. So, you know, kind of a cool piece of history. Um, now, you know, having said that, guys, uh, while these are still considered to be really good eye pieces, you know, if that's all he made, uh, you know, I don't think we'd be talking about Al, you know, right now. Now, what made Teleview actually really popular and famous isn't these plus light pieces. I'm pretty sure if this is all he, you know, made, we, you know, we wouldn't be talking about Al right now, right? The thing that made him popular was the original 13 millimeter Nagler. Now, I don't have the original right now. I have actually owned a copy of it. It actually looks, you know, remarkably close to these. It's a volcano style type of design as well. Pretty tight, I really found that. You know, guys, it's really well corrected for an eyepiece that was, you know, made like, you know, 30, 40 years ago. I mean, that, that, it's still an awesome eyepiece, actually. But anyhow, you know, starting out from that, that eyepiece, uh, they were 82 degree field of view. Again, very well corrected, very great contrast. I mean, it essentially revolutionized, you know, eyepieces for telescopes. Now, of course, after the original 13 millimeter, you know, there was a bunch of different focal lengths. Like this is one of the newer 22 millimeter uh, Naglers right here. This is a type four. Um, I think they're made up to a type six, if I remember correctly. Um, and essentially like all the revisions, all of them are excellent, but the more recent revisions, they're typically smaller physically. Uh, so they're lighter and typically they probably have a longer eye relief um, as well. So, you know, kind of while on the topic of the eyepieces, I will kind of, you know, quickly run through. This is from memory, so I'll probably forget a few, but he's made a bunch of different lines of eyepieces. So there's the Plossils, the Radians, the Delights, the Delos, um, of course, the Naglers. I feel like I'm already forgetting some. Um, and of course, the most recent, the biggest, the baddest ones are the Ethos eyepieces. So I'm going to, you know, kind of, you know, conclude by talking about these. Uh, most of the Ethos are 100 degree field of view. A couple of the uh, really low focal length ones are 110 degree. Um, they're called the XS, so this is the 3.7 millimeter. But anyway, um, guys, uh, these are, you know, I've already made videos on Teleview eyepieces, especially on the Ethos, you know, specifically. 
Um, I mean, these are like the pinnacle of eyepieces. I mean, very well corrected. I mean, amazingly well corrected to the edge of the field of view. Matter of fact, you know, uh, while I'm kind of on the subject of correction, you know, I was actually comparing like the 22 millimeter to the uh, Nagler to the 72 millimeter Ethos recently on the moon. And you could tell that even from the leap from the Naglers to the Ethos, these are a better uh, corrected eyepiece. Um, when I was using this and I had the uh, the moon close to the f uh, the field edge stop, uh, you could tell that it kind of like egg, you know, it kind of there would be some optical distortions with using this guy. These things are amazing. I mean, I've, I tried it with all of these. Um, I mean, right to the edge of the field of view of the 100 degrees, uh, there's essentially no distortion at all. So pretty amazing correction on these. Contrast is awesome. Uh, the other thing, a uh, kind of couple of things that I'll point out, uh, you know, about the Ethos, because these are kind of like the latest and greatest ones. Uh, the coatings on these are amazing. I personally use Explorer Scientific eyepieces a lot. The coatings on these are, I feel better. They give you a little bit better contrast as far as that. Um, also, the polish on the lenses is amazing. Um, I mean, th these are just beautiful, beautiful glass. All right, guys, so just kind of sum up the whole, you know, kind of accessory, you know, portion of this, you know, video. Um, eyepieces wise, guys, I mean, they are, you know, they are the best eyepieces on the market. So if you buy Teleview, you know that you're getting the best. Um, and eyepieces are one of those things that, you know, you can buy these and you can use them with any telescope, right? So they'll stay with you for a lifetime. I mean, again, these were probably bought like 40 years ago, originally not by me, but by somebody. And they're still a great eyepiece today. So um, I'd say, you know, if you're kind of uh, thinking about eyepieces, you know, you know that astronomy is your hobby. You're going to be in it for a while. You, you want the best. I mean, this is the best. So I'll kind of conclude by saying that. This is realistically what Teleview is about, is the eyepieces. Now, having said that, of course, it, we've got a Teleview, Teleview telescope sitting here as well. So you might be like wondering, well, you know, what's the deal with the telescopes, right? Matter of fact, um, <clears throat> I don't talk about Teleview telescopes a lot on my channel, which is interesting because I started out the hobby with using Teleview telescopes. Uh, in the early 2000s, when I was really first kind of getting into the hobby, uh, the very first the kind of like nice telescope that I got was the TV 85, the Teleview 85 millimeter and the green color. Very, very fond memories with observing with that then really cool scope. And then kind of, you know, after that, I actually migrated over to the NP 101 because it was actually released around that time period in the early 2000s or so. Um, so yeah, let me kind of give you guys my experience with Teleview telescopes, you know, uh, and what I think about them, you know, kind of in the current market. Alrighty guys, so here she is, the Teleview NP-101. Uh, the NP-101, I'll kind of start talking about this because um, I feel like this is kind of like the pinnacle of their telescopes. Uh, the NP-101, it's similar to the FSQ telescopes that Takahashi makes, it's a quadruplet, so there's a ED doublet in the front. There's essentially a field flattener in the back. Now, what I like about these, these are totally optimized to be used visually. So any eyepiece will plug in here and then, you know, it'll reach focus or any eyepiece that I've ever tried anyway. Uh, with like the FSQs that Takahashi makes, that's not necessarily true. Um, the older models like this one, and this is exactly like the one that I used to have, I think in like 2002 or three is when I got mine. Um, and back then, I mean, this thing was just like, you know, like a rocket ship for me. I mean, this thing was amazing. And it still is a great telescope. But anyhow, uh, they came with a single speed focuser. These days, if you buy a new one of these, they do have, it's called the IS version. It'll have a two speed focuser and it's a beefier focuser because it's more optimized for um, astrophotography. Also, it does have a better field flattener built in. Uh, compression rings on these uh, newer models. Uh, what's actually kind of curious about Teleview telescopes, and uh, by the way, before I get away from the focuser, even these original models for visual use, I mean, this is a nice focuser. It's a two inch, um, it's smooth. I never really felt like I, you know, missed the two speed too much. Uh, the current versions, again, do have the two speed, and I think you could even upgrade these. Okay, kind of moving on. Um, the other thing that's kind of, you know, unique, I guess, about these is that they use uh, one, um, you know, instead of using two, like most telescopes, they'll use two rings. This is called the clamshell that Teleview makes. I'll kind of show you the other side. This is, you know, like kind of where it unscrews. Uh, works really well. I think it kind of does give them a unique look. 
Uh, finish on these, you know, I think this is paint, right? And I've talked about, you know, different uh, telescope brands to where I, I personally prefer powder coat versus paint. And I might be wrong, this might be powder coat, but it, it kind of looks like paint to me. I will say though, whatever, it, you know, coating that they use, whether it's powder coat or paint, this is very, very durable. Like I haven't, you know, I've, I've encountered quite a few Televues and, um, you know, kind of over the years. Um, uh, I've never really seen one of these like with, you know, like a lot of scratches or anything like that. So this is a very durable finish. Love it. Uh, all these metal parts, by the way, I think they're ionized. Uh, it's a nice finish on these as well. Although I have seen this kind of discolored, you know, with older models. All right, guys. So um, hopefully this won't take too long. Uh, the... Um, Lens cap on these is made out of metal. It screws on as you saw me unscrew it. Uh, the dew shield on these is retractable, so that's very nice. I do like that. Um, one thing that's kind of curious about Televue telescopes is that they do not use baffles in them, right? And just in case you're not familiar with what baffles are, they're essentially like things in you know in the side of the tube of the telescope usually that help to you know make the light kind of go where it's supposed to essentially and you know prevent scatter light. Not sure how well this will show up on the video, hopefully pretty well. Uh, but these guys they actually use uh, you know this type of uh, material it almost looks kind of like sandpaper right um and actually you know from my personal experience i haven't noticed any like re weird reflections or anything with these so i think that baffling that they use that alan agler uses is pretty nice i think it serves its purpose well although i have heard of you know uh with some of these like people have had issues with the like peeling off or whatever so you know i haven't personally seen that uh one thing that i kind of do not really like um is that as you can see on the front here uh there's no like inscription of what the lens is or whatever i usually kind of prefer that's kind of an aesthetic type of thing all right uh one thing that i do like i'm not sure if all of them are made you know in america but like you know like at least the older ones they were made in america so again guys when i was getting into the hobby i uh, tell you telescopes i mean they were considered you know like really top notch and in, in the sense that i think they still are uh, there's the build qualities quality on these is certainly up there you know it's still a very solid very well built telescope i really have no issues with you know like how these are made even these you know single speed focusers are fine with me optics though guys um i kind of you know i guess kind of uh, brought this out a lot in my review that i posted you know fairly recent of the tv85 you know having owned it you know back in the day and 20 years later i mean really the optics on these are kind of you know they're great optics but they are starting to show its age so i mean comparing like the tv85 to a modern, you know, cheaper, you know, quote unquote, cheaper Chinese triplet. I mean, most of them will have better color correction. Contrast is at least as good on the modern triplets. So I think the optics on these are, you know, starting to show its age. Uh, like the MPs, there. I think that's why. Like I think if I was to buy or own, a, you know, a Televue telescope these days, it would be one of these MPs. I mean, this is an f 5.4 telescope. That's very fast very flat field it's very optimized to use the you know wide field of view eyepieces so i think you know optically um like the tv85 the 101 the non-quadruplet scopes that they make i think you know they're really starting to show it's their age it's just a, a lot of the modern telescopes are at least as good uh, or better optically for less money essentially all right, guys, and just to kind of sum up, uh, you know, accessory-wise, eyepieces-wise, this is what Televue is really about these days. Um, I mean, they are the best. You know, telescope-wise, they're great telescopes. I mean, are they anything like super-duper extraordinary? Um, I mean, you know, I think, again, they're great telescopes. Uh, I think there's better options out there these days, you know, realistically, if I'm to be honest, guys. So anyway, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the thing below. Uh, if you guys are not subscribed, but again, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.